my journey of faith really was more, um, it was around me, but it wasn't necessarily my uh, personally adopted faith. I moved to New York with desires to pursue um, opportunities in fashion. Everything, all the decision making, why I even moved or desired to move to New York, uh, you know, these plans of me making it in this particular career or making it in this field were slowly trickling away. I remember very distinctly him putting on my heart that if, um, if I worked at Whole Foods for the rest of my life, but I had him, would it be enough? At this point in my life, I, I feel like re really God got a hold of my heart where he was, again, repurposing the necessity of him in my life. God called me out of this anonymity of being uh, just a, a passerby in, in church culture, um, but actually getting involved in, in meeting people and, and being involved in a community. And I was like, yeah, God, you could be more than enough. God has called us to work, but he's also called us to endeavor for things of the kingdom because he, he graciously knew that the only identity I could truly have um, that would be life-sustaining, life-giving, that wouldn't be a roller coaster dictated by the height of my job and the height of my career and then when I fail and have like, uh, you know, that, that rock bottom moment within that career, that, that my life would in some way feel rock bottom, you know? My dad uh, called me uh, on my birthday and uh, to kind of just wish me happy birthday. And I could sense there was something in his voice um, that was a little off. And, you know, I asked him, like, what's going on? He'd shared that, you know, for him, with regard to his work life, things had just gotten really crazy. Their company just recently got acquired and work had just chose to dump a ton of work on him. In that moment and in that phone call, shared that he was uh, contemplating suicide. And I was like, Dad, like, at the end of the day, all of these things, all this stuff that we're going through, you know, it's, it's, it all comes underneath God's authority. You know, like the work stresses, the, the direction of our lives, you know, has to be surrendered underneath, underneath his lordship. And when we do that, a peace comes because we know at the end of the day, uh, he's in control. It's not us. We don't need to hold on to it. He's in control. Two weeks later, I get a phone call from my brother and uh, he's like, uh, are, you, are you sitting down? And I'm like, um, I'm, I'm working, what's up, what's going on? And he's like, um, dad's gone. From that point began this whirlwind of uh, wild whys, like thinking that our previous conversation and the prayers that I prayed and all of this, you know, God, I had surrendered it to you. You know, like we had surrendered this in prayer, we surrendered this situation to you. Uh, why? And I remember just this peace that came. And it wasn't like it necessarily changed the situation, but in that moment, there was a strength to surrender the why surrender why this happened, why he was gone, why my family now has to go through these things. And in that, that's when the peace came, just letting, letting go and truly now began the journey of walking out what I shared with my dad two weeks ago, that all of our lives are under God's authority. And I found that in C3, I found that in my dinner party, being able to, you know, share with them things that are on my heart that maybe I, in the moment, can't really share even with my own personal family because of the deal, the, the struggles that they're going through. To have that community, to be able to um, see Christ in them, uh, to actually have like a, a, a tangible um, manifestation of His love, you know, just to know that, again, God hasn't forgot about me. He hasn't forgot about my family. I can't say anything more other than just thank you. I'm, I'm just so, so thankful.